Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. We've touched on motion tracking before in Caden Live, but can you map the frames to masks? Let's find out. Alright, so let's just jump right over here into Caden Live. If you haven't seen the original video about motion tracking, do go check that out because that gives a lot more detail about how to start using the effect that I'm going to do right now. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to jump into this and get us going. I'm going to look, actually, for reference, let me just explain that first so you can follow along with me. I am using Caden Live 21.12.1, which as far as I know is the latest and greatest for Ubuntu. It's on Linux, and that's where we are. All right, so I'm going to dig up in the effects, the motion tracker effect. And I am going to select what I am after here. And analyze that so we can detect the changes that are going on here in this clip. This is just kind of a fun test clip that I put together to try to prove out this concept. And let's see what we got. All right, so we can see how that did attempt to follow along. It's not going to be a perfect thing because it's <laughs> attempting to discriminate data in the frame. Um, and sometimes the model doesn't always translate it perfectly, so you may have to tweak some of these keyframes. Keep that in mind. Um, this is not ultra accurate, but it does solve a, lot, a few of the problems. You can also see how it kind of lost track of the object as it transitioned off the hill. So take it with a grain of salt. It may work better in certain conditions, different lighting conditions. This is just for illustrative purposes. All right, so we have some frames to work with. Really, the next thing that we would want to do from here is to click on the three lines and we will want to copy the frames to clipboard. Now this is where we have to kind of understand where the value goes. I did mention in the other video that you can reuse these frames for other effects. That is true for a lot of things. What I found is that you cannot use it in the case of the rotoscoping uh, effect. Uh, rotoscoping allows you to go into the clip and set points and you can actually mask off a very select piece of the clip. Um, you can't use the frames for motion tracking in this because of the geometry involved. Now, maybe at some point um, there will be some development because I would think that you could still reuse the positioning of the keyframe against like the center. If you were just to borrow that one metric, it would work, but right now it doesn't translate doesn't throw an error, but it doesn't work for rotoscoping. It would be awesome if it did, but um, that one doesn't work. However, as a quick cop out, what you can do, get rid of this here, is you can use a different kind of mask, which will get you some of the way there. Uh, for example, if I were to use this alpha shapes, this is pretty cool because it attempts to use a shape, a predefined shape with predefined geometry that you can use to do some of the masking. So let's look at that then. So this is our motion tracker. I'm just gonna collapse this so I don't have to look at that right now. Again, we can change this similar to motion tracking. Look at the other video that explains this, where you can change the kind of mask you wanna use. I'm gonna go with a uh, ellipse here and let's just click in here and you can see even though the selector is still the shape of um the square you can see how it is functioning as an ellipse that can be confusing i'm going to see if i can zoom in a little bit here so we can see better here. So you can see how that is working as an ellipse, and this will get me a good bit of the way of where I want to go using a mask. Now, I mentioned you can reuse those frames. So on this effect, what I want to do is, again, three lines, import, because we already copied them, 
And I'm going to keep this as default. I'll bring it in as geometry in this case. And there we go. We have the same map. So that should follow the same motion path that we created. And that should work as a mask object for what we're doing. Now, I think what's going on here is I have some other clips underneath it. So I'm just going to take <laughs> some of these away here. There we go. So we don't have that messing with our footage here. This will probably be a little clearer this way here. So now we can start to see how this is working. I think this was my clean plate here. So I'm going to see if that maybe works a little better. Yep. So I'm still in the frame. Again, the motion tracking wasn't 100% perfect because I'm in the frame and I'm also in motion as well. But you can see how you can apply that to a mask and borrow the same motion. Okay, so we can use this, I believe, with other, <laughs> other different effects. Uh, let's see, let's try it with a transform effect here. All right, so for this to work, I think it does have to have the same length as the map frames, which means that I can't really edit it first. <laughs> it has to have the same length of where the frames are mapped to. So I'm going to first put on the position and zoom effect, which is kind of a, a rescaling effect. Let's do that first. All right. And let's position that here. And I'm going to try the same thing where I'm going to import my keyframes. There we go. So I did have to recopy the frames again, but that did work where we can actually borrow that same effect. And we've done it to an object that was rescaled. It's actually another video it's rescaled, but you can put the same motion path on that, which is really, really cool. So those are two examples of how you can use the motion track to shortcut and work on really the same base keyframes, it does have to, I think, be the same length, at least initially. So I could, I think, edit this after the fact. Yeah, and then still work with those that, that motion track. Um, so you have to kind of keep the same length first, at least from the, the test that I did. It has to have the same length of time for the keyframes to map out properly. And then you can edit the clip after the fact. All right. But that's how it works. And that's how you can reuse the motion track. And that's how you can leverage the power of the visual discrimination uh, to your advantage. So I hope that's helpful. And I hope that helps elaborate a bit more about how this works. I hope that was helpful. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Um, if this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. That helps me measure what's, what's useful to you. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment. Ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community. And I will see you at the next video. Take care.